Well, here I am, over at Jus Marine Beach, and it's uh, half past seven in the evening. Beautiful evening. Hardly any wind over here. There's quite a few people over here, families with the kids and dogs. And uh, I think we're going to walk down towards the docks this time, past the university which is uh, over there and let's see what's up i can see a lot of people down there i think they're digging lug let's go down and have a look shall we there's a nice shot of port talbot steelworks they're blowing one of the furnaces over there that's where all that steam is coming up and i look down the beach now just another couple have arrived with a dog to enjoy the evening fresh air and uh, right behind me in the sunlight now that's the university Swansea Bay campus empty at the moment because all the students are gone home there's a few left, about 50 I think. The Tesco shop is open for them. Well, limited hours. And uh, I don't know if you can see any over here at the moment. I think they're all watching television. Can't go anywhere. This is what I'm doing at the moment with my kit. It's the only place I can go. I wonder how V-Day is going to uh, turn out on Friday. They are planning celebrations all over the country. But what type of celebration remains to be seen. Got my flags ready anyway. I might be putting on my Victorian police outfit to go up to a party, street party in Britain Ferry. I hope that's still going on. Well, this is the remnants of the sewerage pipe that brought the sewerage uh, from Baldwin Crescent, Elba, Elba Crescent and the factories. Uh, it used to come out here and there's two of the uh, supports and you can see just over there how far out it went. And uh, all the sewerage would come out and the tide would come in then and wash it all away. Now this is the um, new drainage for the 483. That's the dual carriageway in front of the university. And uh, I, I, you can see this is working well. And the water would come out of there, flow down and out towards the sea. This is the new breakwater that they've had to build here because <coughs> if the high tides breach this part then those buildings you see over there would be flooded. And this part of the bay has always been prone to flooding. There used to be banks here, sandbanks, which was the protection, but those have moved away now and exposed the uh, ground behind it to the high, high wind, high tides when they they come in the winter. And by God, they're up as high as that as well. So you can see it's a massive amount of rocks used so the big ones on the bottom one mid, mid middle ones the medium size in the middle and the little ones on the top and there's uh, pvc f sheeting beneath it all to try and stop it moving all these boulders were brought in by barge from the quarry in devon and um, then cranes 
would pick them up and bring them in here and dump them here where they were all sorted for sizes as I said the big ones here are on the bottom medium sized ones are in the middle and the little ones are on the top there's a footpath up there now you can walk along there they've done an excellent job haven't they I must admit put your mind to it look at these these trees that have uh, come in with the tides and have been thrown up there look I mean these are huge trees gives you some idea of the power of the waves and what why they needed to build this breakwater well you can see the difference in size from the the new breakwater there to this size now what's the point of building that if you're not going to do anything about this because this is where the the breach is going to take place they need to build this up to the same size as that breakwater. Most probably it's in the plans, but uh, it'll have to be done. People say that these rocks are sinking into the sand. They're not. What's happening here? is the sand is rising every time the tide comes in it brings in a new layer of sand and then that gets blown right across the bay right up to the river Neath if we you know there are my other walks up there showed you the banks and how high they are there well that used to be down here before it all got blown away and hence they've had to put these boulders here to uh, stop the water but it's not a defense because the water uh, you, it goes right through these uh, and on to the other side it's got to be uh, filled up with some sort of small this is the remnants of the second sewerage pipe I think this one uh, catered for Baldwin's Crescent and uh, it's a bit more left on this but there's a lot of water coming out of this one so I don't know where this water's coming from and you can see there the uh, structure to hold it up and again that went out about 50 60 meters dropped its lot and the tide comes in and uh, washes it away, cleans it all up. And I'm going back now 50 years ago and it must have been bloody awful over here to see this mess coming out of these pipes. And we used this beach as kids to go swimming. Uh, and they they had to do something about it you know because industry was building up here more houses were being built and they needed a new system and they did they put a new system there i you know that windmill that turbine is practically stationary i don't know if you can see it now because i'm filming into the sun but just on the the right of it you can see that white sort of tower that is the new sewerage plant and uh, it, it, that collects all the sewerage from this area and uh, deals with it. And out comes, believe it or not, fresh clean water. And it's pumped out. It's not used, but it's pumped out on the breakwater by the docks there. But we ain't not going down there at the moment. I don't like the look of those clouds over there. This one last look at the university, sitting so splendid with those new buildings and uh, at the moment dysfunctional, nobody in there. There were three and a half students uh, 
are in there when it's when it's uh, going properly. My God, can you see what I can see? I think that gentleman out there, that's his dog. Or is it? But that dog has, is on a wheel cart. He's lost his back end. Now, I don't know if those... Uh, well, he's not calling him back over. So we go a bit closer to him now. Hello? Hello, what are you doing then? Huh? Where's your daddy? Where's your daddy gone? There he is. There he is out there, look. There he is. Come on. Come on. Well, look at that. Flat as a pancake. And very clean as well. So the tides, they do their job when they, they, they come in and out here twice a day. This is why they want to build a lagoon here. Keep them turbines going f four times, isn't it? Four times a day they'll be pumping out, making electricity. But personally, I, I wouldn't want to lose this because this, all this, what I'm working on now would be gone. And the wall of the two uh, lagoon would come in back to land over by there look where them two men are so the tide would come in and fill this up turbines would be shut off the tide would go back out and then this would be full of sea and they'd open up the turbines and they'd drain it and this would empty now, would it go back to this situation or this position? Because there'd be fish and all sorts of things trapped in here when the tide goes out. I don't think they've were pondered over that, have they? And for 150,000 houses, that, you know, I mean, there are millions of houses around here, South Wales, <laughs> and to build a lagoon that's going to cost over four billion pounds for 150,000 houses. Ah, oh, come on, doesn't bear thinking about. Nuclear power stations cost 10 billion pounds. Takes 10 years to build, but they can produce power for a third of the country. Constantly, all the time. I, li I, I know, I lived next door to Dungeness Power, nuclear power plant in Kent, by, uh, by uh, Lid there. And uh, that's closing down now. So, if they go to get rid of diesel cars, petrol cars, combustion engines, and turn everybody into a hiller. They're going to need some <laughs> way of producing the electricity. It's no good building a lagoon for 150,000 houses when everybody, 150,000 people have got electric cars. So those turbines will be swamped. Nah, that's not the answer. You know, Sweden has declared they are they are uh, free now of of coal and oil for making electricity. They've planted these turbines all over the country, and they're pumping out electricity more than what they need. And that's what we want to do here. Yeah. I'd rather see. I'd rather see out there 
right out there. Hundreds of turbines, wind turbines. Rather than take this beach away, there's another evening view of the university. It's eight o'clock in the evening now. Sun is just about to disappear. But isn't that a beautiful view? This is the second drainage pipe for the 483 across the road there. And as you can see what I said earlier on about the sands shifting on this beach. Now that point there is about 10 feet deep with a big drainage pipe like the one you saw earlier on. And as you can see, the sand is shifted and covered it all over. These rocks were here, put here to, to guard the top of that pipe. Of course, they've made no difference to it at all. As you can see, it's completely covered with shifting sands. And this is the <coughs> manual, the inspection manual for that pipe. So that's absolutely pointless having that there, isn't it? Well, that's the end of my exercise walk for this evening. Over the beach again. But it's worth it. I mean, I've been in the house all day. I get up at six in the morning and uh, fiddle around. I spend a lot of time on the computer, a lot of time testing all the cameras and the batteries and make sure they're charged up and discharged and cleaned and everything. So I can't wait for this COVID-19 to finish, I tell you the truth. And uh, how families are managing, I don't know. So I'm signing off now till my next exercise walk. And I'm going to have a shave. Bye.